In Acts chapter 24, we begin reading verse number 1. Uh, and, and I challenge you, I'm only going to read a few verses. I challenge you to, to, you know, this week, read the rest of the chapter and read the next chapter. And you'll see the hand of God working. But I just want to look at a few verses here to gain a thought. The Bible says, And after five days Ananias, the high priest, descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, See that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of, a clem of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we've enjoyed ourselves in the house of God. I enjoyed the good congregational singing. Lord, the, the truth of those songs was a blessing. I enjoyed the special singing, Lord. I'm thankful for Calvary. I'm thankful come morning we'll be home. And I'm thankful, Lord, that you've always been right there. And Lord, we're thankful we can call upon you. Lord, I'm thankful for the good testimonies of how you've moved and how you've blessed and how you've uh, intervened in the lives of your children. And God, they're not ashamed to stand and give you praise to your name. And Lord, we thank you for that. And thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Lord, I'm glad we have the Word of God. I'm glad we don't have some false version or, Lord, we're not reading out of the Koran or something else tonight. I'm glad we have the truth. And Lord, I'm glad you've manifested yourself through your word. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless. I pray you'd help us tonight. I pray for thy people that you'd encourage them, that you would edify them, build them up in their most holy faith. I pray that, Lord, you would uh, uh, settle some things in their lives and God help them to shine his lights in this dark world. Father, I pray for those that are working with the teens on the other side. You'd bless their efforts and bless those young people. And God, put a hedge about them. And God, uh, 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 help them to hide the word of God in their heart that they might not sin against thee. And help them, Lord, in the days that lie ahead in their youth. And Father, we certainly pray if there's anybody in the building tonight that doesn't know the Lord, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray if there's somebody hurting tonight, they'll find uh, 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 the great healing hand of God for their life to, to answer and help in their hurt. And God, I certainly pray if somebody's seeking, they would find. Somebody is struggling, you'd help them along. God, I pray that your will would be done for the needs of those in attendance tonight. Now, Lord, use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name and help us, we pray, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. In this chapter, we find the Apostle Paul is on one of the first steps of appeals in his uh, appearance before governors, in his appearance before magistrates, in his appearance all the way to Caesar uh, uh, over uh, uh, him being held hostage for one thing his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice some things about this text, and there's something I'm interested in here. Notice the alliance in verse number 1. It said, After five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain order named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. We find an alliance. 
We find uh, uh, the elders of uh, Israel, the high priest of Israel. There's Pharisees and those of the Sanhedrin council. There's scribes here. Uh, uh, there are folks that have banded together uh, in one accord uh, to try and bring the Apostle Paul down. Uh, uh, you see, the Apostle Paul used to be one of them. He was Saul of Tarsus. Uh, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Uh, 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 he was a leader amongst them. Uh, he was in line to become the high priest. Uh, uh, but one thing happened. Uh, Paul, who was known for persecuting Christians, Saul of Tarsus, uh, was on the road to Damascus. Uh, he was seeking uh, uh, to arrest and have Christians murdered uh, because uh, what they were teaching was hurting uh, uh, the Jewish faith. Uh, and on that road, uh, uh, the Lord appeared unto him. Uh, and on that road he met Jesus. Uh, and on that road his life changed. Uh, uh, he headed towards Damascus hating Christians. Uh, when he arrived he was one. Uh, and hey, he spent the rest of his life uh, uh, proclaiming Jesus was the Son of God uh, and the only means for salvation. Uh, can I say God uh, uh, used uh, uh, the Apostle Paul to write almost half of your New Testament and how he was used mightily uh, for the faith. Uh, uh, can you imagine where we'd be tonight without the writings of Paul? Thank God for the Gospels. Thank God for the Revelation. Thank God for the epistles of Peter. But can you imagine where we'd be without the epistles to the church? What a blessing. But we see there's an alliance again against him. Let me help you something. If you live for Jesus, when you mark her down, not everybody's going to like you. And you might find where you work, people gang up against you. You might find at the schoolhouse, people gang up against you. You might find uh, uh, in so-called Christianity, people may gang up against you. Huh? Listen, we see an alliance. I want you to notice the accusation. Now this uh, orator, you know, I always worry about orators. And I always get nervous when I'm invited somewhere to preach and they call me the speaker. I'm not much of a speaker. Matter of fact, a lot of times while I'm a preaching, I make up words. I mean, I'm not a speaker. Uh, God didn't call me to speak. I got my lips are too fat and I've had pieces of my tongue cut out. I'm not a good speaker. Uh, uh, God called me to preach. Uh, and a lot of people say, why do you get so loud? I can't help it. That's what God put in me. I just can't help it. Uh, uh, you know, there were 60-something thousand people down there screaming their heads out off uh, for the Bengals today, painting themselves black and orange. And everybody think that's normal. Uh, uh, but if I get excited about Jesus, they think I'm the weirdo. huh? But they bring this order, this speaker, and he has a lot of flowery words here, and he's trying to impress Felix. But notice what he says in verse number 5. He says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world. Now, number one, he did not leave any, lead any sedition. All he did was preach the gospel. But can you imagine being such an impactful preacher that you impacted the world? Hmm? Went on to say, he's a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Huh? Hmm. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be known as a ringleader? Now, you do know being associated with this church a couple years ago, the governor didn't like us. Hmm? Uh, fortunately, we didn't have to take it over his head because the court ruled in our favor. But I'm here to tell you, not everybody likes it when you just live for Jesus. We wasn't bothering nobody. We was just worshiping. Hmm? We find he accuses him. He goes on to say in verse uh, 6, who uh, also hath gone about to profane the temple. Now, if you read on after we, where we stop reading, you'll find the apostle Paul said, I didn't profane the temple. He said, I was with them every day. How come they didn't come to me and say anything while I was in the temple? Why did they come by night and steal me away? Because the Bible makes it clear, beware of those things that are done in secret. Hmm? You know, I don't really mind too much about what they say in front of us when Congress convenes. I'm worried about what they do in them little rooms behind Congress. Uh, mm, uh, that's a whole other message. But anyway, uh, he, he goes on to say that uh, they were going to judge him according to their law in verse number 6. And then the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands. You know why? If you go back a couple chapters and you'll see where they're getting ready to beat Paul. 
The Jews commanded him to be beaten. Now, he'd already been beaten three times hmm, with 40 stripes, save one. But they was going to beat him again. Now, as the centurions went to start to beat him, Paul says, is it lawful for you to beat a Roman? See, the apostle Paul was a Jew, but he was also a Roman citizen. You see, when he was a, a, a leader of the Jews and it had great wealth at that time, he had bought his Roman citizenship. And it was against the law for a Roman to beat a Roman. Hmm? And uh, all of a sudden, they went and they got him away. And then and, and they took him and they said, well, the Jews, they said, this man's a Roman. So they had to appeal to Felix because he's a Roman. Hmm? Uh, isn't it amazing when the law's on our side, they don't like it? So they try to change the laws. That's what they're doing right here. Mm, they're trying to change the laws. Mm. Uh, well, I'll move on. Some of you are about to faint. Notice the assent in verse number 9. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. They all were in agreement. They were going to lie to get their way. They all assented. Yep, these things are so. Now go on and read the rest of it on your own because Paul begins to defend himself. And you know what? You can't, when you speak truth, there, there's no lie that can stand up to truth. But I'm interested in verse number 5 tonight. I was reading the Word of God and I found this to be interesting. It says, For we have found this man a pestilent fellow. I'm interested in that phrase tonight. And I want to preach. You know, they didn't say we found this guy to be a pest or a nuisance. They said, we found this fellow to be a pestilent. You know what that is, pestilence? That's not one grasshopper in the field. That's your whole field covered with grasshoppers. A pestilence. That's not one person sick. That's the whole nation getting sick. That's a pestilence. They said, this man is a pestilent fellow. He is out of control. There is no hope because of this guy. Hmm? And so with that in mind, I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on a pestilent fellow or a pestilent faith. A pestilent fellow or a pestilent faith. Can I say, first of all, a pestilent fellow, uh, he possesses a faith that aggravates his foes. If you are somebody that's full of God, uh, you'll aggravate those who are not full of God. You will get under their nerves, huh? I like it when somebody comes and visits and they really thought they were going to the vineyard and, and we don't find that as much as we used to since they changed the road. And they come in, they sit down by, by Brother Phil. I love that. Hmm? Or they sit in front of Brother James. I love that, huh? Just to see the sheer panic on their faces when them guys get plugged in and get to hollering and hooping. Uh, it, it, I, I just love looking at it because uh, uh, they became a pestilent fellow to that crowd. Uh, 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 they didn't like that. Uh, I, I get a little nervous when church gets loud. I've been around folks. Uh, uh, they say, I just don't like it when it gets a little loud in church. I get a little nervous when it gets loud. Uh, can I be honest? I get a little nervous when it gets quiet in church. Huh? Uh, uh, well, when we don't have anything to shout about, when the Holy Spirit isn't moving in the service, that's when I get nervous. Uh, I, I never get nervous when he shows up. Uh, I get nervous when he's not here. Uh, and this fella, uh, 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 he has a faith that aggravates his foes. Uh, uh, they've beaten him. Uh, they've stoned him. Uh, they've left him for dead. Uh, and he keeps popping back up. Uh, and he keeps living for Jesus. Uh, and he keeps preaching Jesus. Uh, hey, uh, I like that crap. Uh, just got a little bit to them. Uh, uh, you can knock them down, but they keep popping up. Uh, and they keep proclaiming Jesus is Lord. Uh, and Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, uh, they say, shut up. And they get uh, louder. Uh, uh, they say, we don't want what you got. It doesn't matter. They just keep preaching uh, and proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Uh, that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, can I say a pestilent fellow possesses a faith that aggravates his foes? Can I say, second of all, a pestilent fellow has a fire that cannot be quenched? They did everything this man you could do to him. And his fire just kept getting brighter and brighter. Can I say, we're still talking about him 2,000 years later. What a fire he possessed. Say, where did that fire come from? The Holy Ghost. Uh, 
Uh, did not John, speaking of Jesus, say that he shall baptize you uh, with the Holy Ghost and with fire? Uh, those that are truly born again, uh, uh, they have something this world doesn't have. Uh, they've got a flicker in their heart uh, uh, that when God uh, gets to stirring uh, and God gets to throwing another log on it, uh, that flicker can turn into a blaze uh, and God help us to have a revival uh, where God's people are set on fire again. And I say, a pestilent fellow has a fire that cannot be quenched. Mm -mm. The more they try to douse it out, the brighter it gets. Mm -mm. Can I say this? A pestilent fellow has a fellowship that cannot be altered. Mm -mm. Uh, a pestilent fellow walks with Jesus. Can I say that the crowd who doesn't walk with Jesus does everything they can to get the person who walks with Jesus to quit walking with him? And, and Miss Sharon, they don't care that you walk with Jesus. They don't want you to walk with Jesus so much. You know, they, they just want you to tone it down some. You know, it's okay that you believe. Just don't believe so much that it impacts my life. Hmm? You know, they don't care if you go to church. Just don't go to church three times a week and, you know, give 10% of your money as a tithe and then give an offering and then sing the songs of Zion, not only while you're in church, but when you're out of church. And when you're out of church, tell people to Jesus the best thing ever. You're a religious fanatic. Well, there's a lot of fanatics in this world. If I'm going to be one, I'd rather be a Jesus fanatic than anything. huh? Uh, but they don't want you to have that kind of walk. But you see, a pestilent fellow has a fellowship that can't be altered. Uh, uh, I love that old song, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. Sure. There's just something about Jesus. I just got to go where He goes. Yeah. I just got to be around Him. Yeah. So I just don't like that. I'm sorry. You're just not going to have to like that about me. I'm just going to hang out with Him. Hmm? Uh, because He's the best thing that ever happened in my life. There's been many times, uh, Brother Ron, I've walked away from Him, but He's never walked away from me. Yeah. Every time I walk away, I turn around. There he is again. He's right there. You can't leave, Spider. Don't leave you. And he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's a fellowship that can't be altered. Can I say this? A pestilent fellow possesses a foundation that can't be moved. You know what's wrong with this world? They keep trying to move the guidelines. Huh? Isn't it amazing that our Constitution was great till about five years ago? Uh, wasn't it great? To, the Pledge of Allegiance was great till all of a sudden somebody said we need to take a, uh, under God out. Uh, the Star Spangled Banner was great until somebody said we've got to take a knee for it. They're constantly wanting to change anything. By the way, I don't understand all of it because I don't pay much attention to it because I think it's all stupid. I know we're not supposed to say stupid, but it's stupid. All this woke junk. Yeah. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. You've got to live with it. I don't. I just preach against it. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, they're trying to change everything. Because everybody has to win. Can be no losers. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody's pretty. I got news for you. Not everybody is pretty. Huh? They're just not. Don't get mad at me. Take it up with God. He's the one that made you. All right? Not, not everybody's pretty. Not everybody's handsome. Matter of fact, if we're going to be real honest, there's less pretty people and less handsome fellows than there are pretty people. And because, you know, that's all the ones that go to Hollywood and they've all been altered. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but listen everybody's got to be told that they're special. Everybody's, everybody's got to be told how wonderful they are. When, when you act like the devil, you're not wonderful. But all this woke crowd has been putting pressure on companies. If you don't do what we say, then we're going to cancel you. And all of our followers are going to quit buying stuff from you and quit supporting you. So uh, in the last two, two and a half years, all these companies have went woke. You know what is happening? All the normal people, the unpretty people, the normal folks, us, who really buy stuff, all normal people quit buying all this woke stuff. 
I won't spend my money if they're denying the Lord, if they're trying to you know, push something wicked on my life, they don't get my money. Well, I know that makes me out to be something. I, I don't know what I'm even called anymore. What is misogynist, by the way? I don't even know what that word is. It scares me. Huh? Uh, you know, we're called racists and misogynists and bigots and all kinds. I thought Archie Bunker was a bigot. I thought they died with him. I don't know. I, but anyway, all these people were called all these names. But what we quit doing is we quit buying all the products from these companies that have went woke. And about 70% of them are going bankrupt. They're losing their shirts. Mm. Wokeness is going brokeness. Are you listening? Uh, I think it's good because I don't want to have to learn about it. I'll just get rid of it all. It's junk. Huh? Listen, reality. There are losers. Reality, not everybody wins. Mm. Reality, you're going to have problems. I don't care how much. But we, quit, we keep changing the laws. We keep changing the boundaries. We keep changing everything because people aren't satisfied. You know why people aren't satisfied? Because they don't know Jesus. Amen. You know who loves everybody regardless of what you look like? Jesus. Right. You know where there's true equality? In Jesus. He's no respecter of persons. You know what? Uh, who will give you a better life? Jesus. Amen. Now, he won't leave you the way he found you, but he'll change your life. Huh? But see, the woke crowd and the alliance crowd here and the enemy crowd, they don't like the fact that they can't get us to change our minds on some things. Let me help you with something. This is my foundation. If this settles it, I don't really care what anybody thinks. You say, Brother Doug, that's not very nice. Well, I'm sorry. I may not be nice, but I am right. I'd rather be right than nice. I'm going to try to be compassionate. I'm going to try and be kind. I'm going to try and show you uh, respect. But the truth of the matter is, uh, if you want to live contrary to the book, I'm not going to line up with you. Hmm? The best way I can be nice is to tell you the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Hmm? You know what I had to learn? I had to learn I was a sinner. You know what I had to learn? Sinners die and go to hell. That's not very nice. But you know what else I learned? I learned that Jesus died on the cross to pay my sin debt so I wouldn't have to die and go to hell. And that if I put my faith and trust in Him, He'll not only save me, He'll change my life and He'll give me an abundant life and He'll bless me beyond my comprehension. And then when this life is over, I'll have eternal life with Him forevermore. And I'd rather know the truth. Then somebody lied to me to make me feel better about myself. Huh? Listen. It's amazing how people keep changing the guidelines. Our Congress has done that. You know our, our government was set up to have three different heads. You had the legislative, you had the executive, and then you know you had the court system. All three of them, the Supreme Court, the President, and Congress work together so that there's no big monster. And they'll work together on behalf of their constituents, the American people. But ever since Obama, it doesn't matter what Congress or the courts say. And the president just writes executive orders and does what he wants. Huh? And we have uh, an, an, amaze, an amazement when you can get an attorney general who will fight some of these executive orders in the court system and they're found to be unconstitutional and they get thrown out. But uh, uh, unfortunately, they don't do enough of that. Uh, and we have uh, 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 presidents running around like they're king. And it's ruined America. It has. It's ruined America. And when you've got liberal judges who do whatever the liberals want, it's ruined America. They just keep changing the rules. I, I, I thought God settled it way back in Genesis that he made male and female. I don't care what your pronoun is. You're either a man or a woman. It's not real tough. Huh? And we've got a, a woman sitting on the Supreme Court who could not, when she was asked multiple times, define what a woman was. I can help you with that. It's a grown lady, you know, grown female. That's what a woman is. It's not real tough. Huh? Put me on a Supreme Court. But anyway, we keep just changing the guidelines. You know what doesn't change? The Lord. 
He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bless the Lord. Hmm? You know what people really want? Consistency. I don't want the rules changing. I want the rules to be the rules. Let's follow the rules. Huh? Well, enough of that. You say, you're awful pestilent. Thank you. Appreciate that. A pestilent fellow has a foundation that can't be moved. Uh, can I say this? A pestilent fellow has a future without regrets. You know, the Apostle Paul knew when he got before Caesar that his life would end. God had already revealed it to him. But listen, does this sound like a man who's, who's awful tore up about the fact that he's going to have his head chopped off? In 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Didn't say he won every battle. Didn't say he became an icon. He just said, I fought a good fight. And when it's all said and done, if it can be said of us, we fought a good fight, we'll have a future without regrets. And what a blessing to be a pestilent man. You know what would change America if we have pestilent men again? If we just had men who were men again. Hmm? I'm so tired of, 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 of sissy fellas. Huh? You know, there has been a push for 25 years to demasculate the man in America. Hmm? To make a man out to not be a man anymore. Huh? It's funny, we got women acting like men and men acting like women. And can I say, whenever your roles are reversed, you're going against the order God made us? Huh? And heaven help you, if you stand up and, and have a, a firm opinion about something, oh, my stars, who are you? I'm just trying to be a man. Hmm? But that's an odd thing in this day and age. God help us. Hmm? We need some pestilent fellows. Amen. Fellows that know the Lord, know what they believe, but aren't ashamed of it. That's all Paul was. He wasn't trying to be a, a punk. He wasn't trying to be anything that uh, 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 brought uh, uh, disrespect on anybody. He was just living for the Lord. And they didn't like it. You can be a pestilent fellow, or you can have a pestilent faith. Uh, there are a lot of people that have a pestilent faith. They have faith, but it's not the faith of the Bible. And their faith is hurting the cause of Christ. And I say there's a lot of people who call themselves Christians who don't live by the Bible. But see, those that don't know what Christianity really is, those outside the, uh, the realm of the church, uh, when they hear Christian, they just lump us all together. Hmm? Yeah. I'll never forget when Jimmy Swagger went bad, uh, there were fe fellas couldn't wait to get to work to come and tell me about it. Jimmy Swagger fell. Jimmy Swagger did this. Jimmy Swagger did that. And they wanted me to, to kind of try and defend Jimmy Swagger. And they looked at me and said, what do you think about that? I said, doesn't shock me. I said, I know he's been wrong for a long time. Well, they didn't, they didn't know what to do with that. They thought I was Jimmy's buddy. Huh? But the truth of the matter is, when folks claim to know Christ, and yet their life doesn't emulate what a Christian is, it affects all of us. And there are some who have a pestilent faith. Can I say a pestilent faith has a complacency that aggravates God? Amos 6.1 says, Woe to them that are these in Zion. Hmm? Instead of having that relationship that pleases God, their complacency aggravates God. As a matter of fact, Revelation 3 said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're lukewarm. And that's what's wrong with a lot of churches. The fire's been dimmed so much, they're just lukewarm. Can I say they have a coldness void of fire? I just don't like being around cold Christians. Hmm? I don't like being around Christians who think they're better than other people. I don't like it. I don't like being around preachers that are really nasty. I, don't, I just don't like it. Hmm? Can I say this about a pestilent faith? It has a comradeship available to the highest bidder. Hmm? Uh, I've seen preachers be booked to go preach for somebody and somebody else call and offer them a, uh, more money, bigger, bigger meeting, and they'll call the first guy up and say, oh, I, I can't make it. I have no use for somebody like that. Hmm? That's called a hireling, not a man of God. Hmm? Can I say a pestilent faith has a compromised foundation? There are a lot of churches that used to preach the gospel, and today 
They're just museums. They've compromised. And they all do it under the same umbrella. We're trying to reach the young people. You know what young people want? They want standards. They want truth. They want to know what the rules are. They don't mind following the rules. They just want to know what they are. Young people want to know that Jesus loves them. Young people want to know that Jesus cares. Young people want to know that Jesus offers the best life they can ever live. Can I say this? I've already made people mad, Sid, so I might as well say this. Miss Marcy, you know what's wrong with a lot of young people? Their parents don't want them to have a life sold out to Jesus because that will make the parents have to live a life that's sold out. Mama wants to live a little loose, so she lets the daughter live a little loose. Daddy don't want to be accountable, so he doesn't make the young man accountable. Are you listening? That's what's happening in a lot of churches. Hmm? Huh? I'm glad we got good young people, aren't you? Hmm? Huh? You know, we haven't drawn one of these young people with offering them a cheeseburger to come to church. We haven't drawn any of these young people promising them a, a, a big party if they come to church or video games or rock music or any of that. Hmm? You know what we give them? The gospel. We give them Jesus. Hmm? Yeah? And if Jesus don't work, we ought to all go out of business. huh? Hmm? Can I say this? A pestilent faith has a coming judgment full of regrets. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Those that have a pestilent faith they stand before the Lord. It's not going to be a happy day. Instead of gold and, and precious stones and silver, they're going to have wood, hay, and stubble. And their works will be burned up before them because all of their works were vanity. And can I say? That's why so many people get real nervous when you start talking about the rapture. They're not ready to go. And then there are some, Daniel, get excited about the rapture because they think the Lord's coming to deliver them out of all their problems. Now, the Lord's taking his church out of here. But the Bible says that's the beginning of sorrows for those that are left here. But can I say there are a lot of people going to limp into heaven when they could go out in a blaze of glory. The difference is being a pestilent fellow or having a pestilent faith. You know you're going to be judged based on the word of God and what kind of faith you have. And if you have the right kind of faith, you'll be a pestilent fellow. You'll be somebody that folks won't understand and want to do away with. Because every day that you live, you're an indictment against their life. Hmm? Now listen, not everybody's liked. I wish everybody was liked. Can I be honest with you? I want to be liked. I want people to like coming here, and I want people to like the preaching and like. But the truth of the matter is, I want to be right more than I want to be liked. And sometimes you've got to preach, and it's not a likable thing. There are some messages I preach I don't like. But the Lord says, preach it. Uh, I wish I could preach on heaven all the time. But it's just not feasible if we're going to preach the whole Bible because we're going to be judged by the whole Bible you're not always going to hear stuff that tickles your ears but I'd rather have truth than to be tickled now there's some their faith is weak because they don't spend as much time with the Lord as Paul did you know, when you just kind of think about Paul, you think about him getting saved, and then you think about God using him. A lot of people don't realize he, he spent 15 years on the backside of, an, uh, of nowhere, just him and the Lord, and the Lord preparing him for everything he was going to have to go through. And can I say, if you don't spend some private time with the Lord, you'll never be a pestilent fellow. 
and your faith will never be what it should be. We ought to all ask God to do a work in us that increases our faith so much that we impact people like Paul did. Well, we can look at this. He's arrested right now, and it's not looking good for Paul right now. But look at all the people he affected for Christ. Look at all the churches he planted. Look at all the places he went and ministered to people. He impacted people in his day and every generation after that. And can I say, even when we go through things, it's a light affliction compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Quit focusing on the negatives and focus on the goodness of God. And you'll find being a pestilent fellow is not a burden. It's a blessing. Hmm? Huh? And you don't have to have a fighting spirit to be pestilent. All you've got to do is have a love for Jesus and let people see that love in your life. And many that don't understand it will come to know the Lord because they see what a difference he's made in your life. And that's what it's all about anyway, that they can see the change he's made in our lives. And they can see the excitement you have for the Lord. And friend, that will outweigh anything this world has to offer. Hmm? Listen. Everybody's all excited about the orange and black right now. If they get beat next week in the playoffs, you won't even hear no more about them. Huh? Because that's how people are. They're fickle. But if they can see day in and day out how much Jesus means in your life, they'll say there's something real about that. Hmm? You know what I love about Brother Phil? He's real. Hmm? Hmm? You know what's, what I love about a lot of you? You're real. Hmm? Huh? That's all the world really wants to see. Folks that are real. Folks that serve Jesus regardless of the circumstances in their life. That's what they deserve to see. We ought to show them that. Because Jesus is so good in my life, he outweighs the circumstances. Whether or not they're good or bad. So I wonder tonight, are you willing to ask the Lord to make you a pestilent fellow? Somebody who is so full of Jesus that the world takes note of you? Or do you just want to ebb and flow through life and have a pestilent faith? The decision is really based upon how much do I really love Jesus? Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Why well, gets a song? If the Lord spoke to your heart, the altar's open, all right? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Lord, I pray you'd give the boldness to us that we need to be pestilent to this lost and dying world. Help us to see how much love we have for Jesus. Help us, Lord, to have so much Jesus in our life that those that don't know you are aggravated by that until they come to know you. And then, Lord, they'll bless you too. Saul of Tarsus was aggravated with Christians until it became one. So God, help us not to have a pestilent faith a complacent faith but help us to be a pestilent fellow to this world something that impacts our world for all time and eternity blessing this invitation speak to hearts we'll thank you for it in Jesus name we pray Amen Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes TuneIn, SoundCloud and Google Play head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today and as always thanks for listening